Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies. Today bringing you a video on how to paint the new or commandos tabletop standard quick and easy. This should be an enjoyable video. Um, I've decided to take inspiration from you know, 80s action movies, kind of like Vietnam movies for what they're gonna look like. So normal or green skin, lots of brown for leathers, but then I've actually gone for a green uh, kind of khaki color for uh, their overalls and their, their uniform. So let's hope I can pull those two colors apart, the skin tone and the, the jacket color, um, and see how it turns out. Hope you enjoy the video, guys. Okay, guys, the two models that we're gonna be using for this tutorial are these two commandos here. So one is the sergeant and one is a stab -a boy or a knife -a boy. He's got a cool name, but I can't remember. Um, just to give you guys an idea of what it'll look like on someone who's a bit more fancy, like this guy here, and what it'll look like more on a standard uh, orc commando. Unfortunately, at this bit, I forgot to show off the pot, which is the orc flesh from the contrast range. So this paint, we are gonna use a, a, a nice uh, full coat of it, and we're aiming for all of the skin on both miniatures. So as you can see, I'm working around the, uh, uh, the torso bit here of this orc. I've been a little bit more careful than normal not to hit the uh, the belts and stuff because this orc flesh is actually quite dark, um, which means any of the lighter contrast I want to put anywhere else um, will be tinted if, if I accidentally hit it with the orc flesh. So just take your time, um, try and only hit the, the skin bits, but if you make mistakes, it's, it's no big deal. Uh, layering later on will fix any mistakes you make. Um, I decided to go for a slightly different uh, orc skin than in any other tutorials just to kind of differentiate the idea of a, a fantasy orc to a 40k orc. I always felt that the uh, 40k orcs had a darker skin tone to the uh, fantasy ones. And here's what it looks like on both of the miniatures with the orc flesh applied. It's quite a nice color. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, so now what we're going to do is going to move on to the cloth. Um, and like I said in the intro, I want to go for that kind of like Vietnam khaki style. Um, or the olive green style, so I've gone for the uh, that uh, militarum green contrast paint. And with this, we're trying to aim for all of his uh, fabric. So for me, it's going to be his uh, his waistcoat jacket thing here. I'm sure it was a military jacket, but he tore the sleeves off in proper 80s action style. Um, his pants and the material of his backpack. So not all the straps and stuff, obviously, but the, the actual backpack body itself. So uh, we're going to go around neatly and... Uh, Try to apply the contrast there. I love if you can see there how it's already settled into all those creases and stuff. Looks fantastic. And there we have it. There's where I've applied this color to. You can see what I mean on the backpack there. Left all the straps and the, the gubbins uh, clean, but I got the green on. And with this guy, I've just gone for his little vest and his pants. And once again, his backpack, leaving all the pouches and extra stuff to be painted later on. With that done, it's time to move over to Black Templar. There's going to be a quick coat thrown onto their boots. Black leather, military style boots, which I believe suit the commandos down to the ground. So a lot of the brush quite heavily and uh, yeah, throw a coat on the boots. Shouldn't be, a, shouldn't be a long process to do this bit, just a minute or two. There we have it. The uh, black is applied to the boots. The next thing I'm going to do is move over to all of his straps and pouches and any other bits like that. And for that, we're going to use Gore Grunt of Fur Contrast. So like I was saying with um, a previous stages, Gore Grunt of Fur is a dark color. If you hit the green, it will stain it. So try and be as neat as possible. Maybe switch to a smaller brush if you're not uh, confident with your control. And then just go along all the straps with your Gore Grunt of Fur any pouches or anything like that as well. This stage can take a little bit of time, but it's totally worth it just to break apart all that green. Um, and it really adds to that kind of commando look. These models are actually stunning. Um, like I've said before that the uh, Creek seems to have stolen the show from the box set, but once you actually hold these orcs and start getting paint on them, you realize how beautiful they actually are. So I'm thoroughly enjoying getting these guys built and painted. Especially across his chest is quite tricky. A lot of little fine gaps you've got to get the paint into without hitting anything else. But I think that's going to be silver or anything later on. You can just lash over it. So his belt buckle there is going to be silver later on, but I just got... Gorgon to fur all over it. No big deal. And here's what the models will look like with all of the brown blocked out on them. 
this was a turning point of the model for me. I was worried it was too much green at this point, but this really helped to break it all up. Uh, their backpacks are so detailed, it was such a pleasure to paint. Now onto the longest stage. This is the lead belcher. What we want to do here is block in anything that's going to be metallic with the lead belcher paint. And on these guys, there's so many little details, little buckles, um, little loops, all of their weaponry, anything like that needs to be blocked out in silver. And like I said, this, is, this takes the longest amount of time um, in the painting process, so take your time, be patient. You don't want to be hitting their skin with any of that silver or anything like that. And as you can see, even I've swapped over my brush to uh, something with a really fine point just to get in there um, and get that silver on. So working around the grenades on his chest, I don't want to hit any of the brown straps, any of the skin or any of the, the green khaki color. And if you thought the normal boy had a lot of silver to do, my God, the, the sergeant of the squad has a lot. Um, his weapons are huge and all need to be blocked out in silver. Uh, his belt buckle, uh, all the little kind of bits of trim and stuff on his backpack. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot. It takes, it took, I suppose it took me a couple of minutes just to, to block out the silver on this guy. But uh, it's so super worth it at the end. Um, looks great. And this is what it should look like with all of the silver done. You can see just what I meant by how much of it there was. But uh, it was a lot of fun to paint. Starting to look like a miniature now. Um, we're going to jump over to a really quick detail now with just a bit of retributor armor. You could use any kind of dark gold you have or any dark bronze you have. It's just to break up these knives a little bit. So I'm going to paint their, their hilts um, or their finger guards and stuff in a, a gold color. Nothing special, just a little something. You can see here like the uh, knuckle duster style thing that he has. And then my favorite stage. Seraphim Sepia is going to be applied all over the miniatures just to tie all those colors together um, and give us a really fantastic base to, uh, to start the layering process. I love as soon as you apply it, you see how it breaks up um, all the little uh, gubbins on his back, all those little extra details suddenly jump out at you and then all those colors kind of join together. I will never get tired of applying washes to miniatures and seeing all that detail pop. Same with the big boy, start throwing a shade all over him, making sure to get in all the nooks and crannies. I love what it does. You can see how it interacts differently with the skin and the cloth as well. And here we have the shade applied all over the miniature. Starting to get that grungy, orky look. These guys don't really know how to take care of their equipment, but man, they sure like having a lot of equipment. Okay, time to uh, start brightening up that skin. Uh, we're gonna use a lesion green for this and just a light dry brush. This is of course after you've waited for the uh, skin to dry um, or the shade to dry. Um, I've also, while the shade was drying, I threw the first coat of paint over the base. Um, just to kill two birds with one stone. Why wait for one paint to dry? Then apply another thick coat that's going to take a long time to dry. And yeah, you're just looking for a light dry brush just to catch those muscles. Just to make it pop. You don't have to be super precise. This is the kind of stage where it's not too bad if it hits off his green khaki jacket or anything like that. And we're going to be hitting it all with the bone dry brush in a minute. Um, and that's going to really help pull all the colors together. I have been having a problem with my camera liking to focus on my hand as opposed to the miniature, especially with models as dark as this one. But uh, hopefully you guys can still see what I'm trying to do. Look at that beautiful in focus thumb. Super helpful. <laughs> and now it's time for the magic bone dry brush. I love being able to do this on certain fabrics and stuff. So over his skin, as you can see, I'm being quite light with it. I'm just catching things like the tips of his ears, his brow bones. Um, it's going to look great over his fingers and his muscles. And then also it's fantastic over the green and the brown. It just catches all of the corners, all of the edges. and uh, It looks great. As you can see, I'm just going all over. 
catching all the wraps on his grenades and stuff. And yeah, don't be shy with the bone dry brush. See how it's caught all the straps and stuff? Acted like I've edge highlighted them all. And I have not. Just a quick dirty dry brush. Delighted. Same thing on the big man. A little bit lighter, catching his uh his lips, his chin, ears, his nice little commando hat. The detail that that's done already, if you look at his face to the rest of his body right now. It's absolutely insane. Then we'll follow through and do the rest of his body. And wait and see what this bone dry brush does over the backpack here. And look at those straps. You'd swear I spent a lot of time on them. And I did not. Now onto the lead belger. We are going to spend a little bit of time making that silver pop again. So we're going to take our time and do a little bit of layering. Small brush. We're don't, not looking for an all over coat. More like a little feather. So just on the raised areas. Fronts of the grenades. We won't be worrying about the backs of them or anything like that. Just where the light will hit it. A little bit on the earring and daggers. As you can see I'm not flipping the model upside down and making sure I paint the underneath of the daggers. It's not important. And these guys, this is like a feathering motion. Just pick a direction, straight lines, point to point. And as you can see, there's also all those little bits where the bone may have taken away from the silver um, on all these little uh, buckle straps and stuff. So just a quick touch up again brings them back to that silver look. Maybe all those little bits inside of that webbing. Just a tiny touch of silver. I love the detail in their backpacks. Look at all those bits and pieces. It's really starting to look great now. Cannot wait to see the whole squad done. Here's the big man done as well. You can things see how it's all shaded like a shooter there. All the shade is left in all those recesses, all the stuff on his backpack. Um, but the silver just pops a little bit more. Here it is on the um, Staba orc, whatever he's called. And now we're going to move on to the Zandri dust phase. With this, we're just blocking out the teeth. And uh, his fingernails, if you could be bothered with them. A lot of the times I can't. Um, I'll just stick with his teeth because that's where people are going to look. But when you do a kill team squad, it's usually only between 8 and 10 miniatures. And that makes up the entire force on the table. Um, so there is that chance that people will be picking up um, individual models and having a proper gawk at them. Some You might want to bother painting them nails and stuff. Jump over to you, Shopty Bone again. This time it's to just do the tips of the teeth now. So... Like we did with the, the lead belcher, layering it up over the, the shade. We are just looking to touch it up, make it pop. Not covering the whole tooth, just about halfway down up to the point. You can see how that jumps already. A little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet. And this is for those orc beady eyes. Um, you need to take your time with this. That's my finest brush here. It's the extra small artificer layer. I only use this thing to paint things like eyes and buttons and that kind of thing. Um, because it would be hard to fix this if you uh, if you got it wrong. And there you go. Orc beady eyes on the commando. That's pretty much what it's going to look like. There's not a lot left to do on these guys. Um, I'm going to finish up basing them really quickly. And then there, the final reveal. There's two orc commandos done. I'd say 10 to 15 minutes to paint up both of those guys. Total brush time. Um, obviously takes a little bit longer while I'm filming. But yeah. I would be super happy to put a squad of 10 of these guys. And a bomb squig on the table looking like this. Um, running around trying to be sneaky. And uh, fighting off all the other kill teams. So obviously everything I've shown you here. Is um, a very easy to translate over to a full 40k orc army. Um, I think that would look pretty decent on the tabletop. Um, yeah, really delighted with this. 
And there we have it guys, uh, two Orc Commandos have were painted up. Um, it took absolutely no time at all. As you've seen once again, lead, leading heavily into the contrast paint. Shade that down, layer it up a little bit, have a lot of fun. Um, I think the uh, the two colors did in fact get pulled apart in the end. I think the skin definitely looked like skin. The cloth definitely looked like cloth. Um, and that worked a treat. So if you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more videos like this in the future, show some support, subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and yeah. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye. Remember, the plan is simple. We paint them all.